so in the last class i discussed uh, the very basic uh, fundamental theorems of electrical machines uh, there are two, basically two things uh, uh, for uh, am i audible yes sir okay uh, there are basically two things uh, two uh, very basic principles based on which most of the machines are designed uh, okay so one thing is how the uh, voltage is generated okay so this is one thing and another thing is how the torque or the force is generated okay so these two things we have discussed in the last class we saw that how the voltage is generated the very basic uh, theorem is uh, is there that is the faraday's law of induction that is the only one theorem is there okay and uh, it has a different engineering or implementation technique to have a voltage generated in different situations so that also we discussed in the last class okay one more thing is the torque and force generation for that also we discussed two basic techniques are there one is called the electro magnetic torque or electromagnetic force in which basically two electromagnetic uh, field interact and generate the torque or the force okay another way of generating force or torque is called the reluctance torque or reluctance in that we have seen only one field is present but due to the variation of reluctance generally we get the torque okay so these are the thing that we discussed in the last class then we try to define an electrical machine okay so what is an electrical machine and then we uh, saw two very basic rules fleming's left hand rule and fleming's right hand rule these two rules are very powerful for explaining many things in electrical machine so you should remember these two rules then we started discussing different types of uh, machines what are the different possibility of uh, different machines okay but uh, there are only a few machines that there in your in our syllabus but we should know what are the total uh, uh, overall coverage of the electrical machines okay so that we started discussing and we got some sort of uh, interruption due to the network connectivity is it okay today am i audible clearly yes sir yes sir okay now can anybody tell me what is the definition of machine anybody from you i want to just recapitulate what we discussed in the last class sir uh, device which converts electrical energy to mechanical or is louder please sir a device which converts electrical energy to mechanical or vice versa yes yes that's all in presence of magnetic field in presence of magnetic field okay so that is the most important point in the definition the energy conversion that is electrical to mechanical or vice versa this conversion should take place in the presence of magnetic field okay now somebody tell me the uh, fleming's rules okay should i ask you okay sujoy ghosh sujoy ghosh can you unmute yourself Yes, sir. Uh, Fleming's left hand rule. Yes. Mm. 
if uh, we indicate the uh, current uh, through the middle finger and electro magnetic field through the index and then uh, the uh, thumb represent the direction of okay first you have to you have to mention that how the fingers which uh, is will be stretched the okay, finger, three fingers will be perpendicular to each other okay okay so you should uh, go through the notes properly and you should watch the video that i have uploaded anyway so let's start the class so if you forget this then uh, so this is the fleming's left hand rule right hand rule you have to stretch these three fingers only not any other combination only these three fingers you have to stretch mutually perpendicular to each other then always uh, the uh, the index finger represents the magnetic field the middle finger always represents some sort of electrical quantity maybe voltage maybe current some sort of electrical quantity would be represented by your middle finger and thumb is always will represent some sort of mechanical quantity mechanical variable like thrust or motion or force torque etc so some mechanical quantity will be represented by the thumb and the, your index finger always will uh, represent the magnetic field irrespective of the right hand rule and left hand rule so that you should mirror. remember and the left hand rule we generally call it as a motor rule and the right hand rule we generally call it as a generator rule okay. and we also st uh, started uh, the different compare comparison of rotational and linear uh, machine in rotational machine uh, what is the difference in rotational and linear machine can anybody tell me i showed some uh, video as well okay so let me ask you uh bishwajit shaha 1085 can you unmute yes sir can you tell me what is the basic difference between the rotation and a linear machine so rotational motion is actually take actually takes place either any part of the machine does any rotation or what and for the linear machine uh, like linear motion is executed by any of the machine parts okay uh is there some mechanics involved in this type uh, of machines sir uh, it can uh, so we can also say that in rotational machines the net and there is some net torque but uh, the net force may be zero but in linear machines uh, the net torque is zero but some force is there okay now uh, in the machine part now what kind of uh, mechanics theory we can use for this rotational and linear uh, machines as far as the mechanics is concerned so we can use the rotational mechanics and the classic linear mechanics associated with what we have learned actually okay can we use a uh, newton second law of motion for uh, rotation as well as for linear machines uh, yes sir but uh, there will be an analogy in linear f equal to m but in in rotational motion that the force will be analogous to torque mass will be 2i and uh, that uh, acceleration to alpha uh, an analogy Okay, so you are saying that for linear, we should write force equals to mass into acceleration, isn't it? And for rotational, what we should write? 
Tau. Tor. Okay, Tor. Summation of Tor equals to? Ion Tor. So generally we call it Z because uh, uh, we generally represent current uh, as I. So generally we use J and alpha. Okay, so alpha, I think you know already what is alpha. Uh, so that is basically D omega DT or you can write the, in terms of angular position, theta. And here also the alpha A we can write as a DVDT or we can write uh, in double derivative of displacement. Am I right? So this type of equations are involved uh, in rotational and linear machines as far as the mechanics is concerned because as it is a electromechanical device, always we have to think of two subsystems. There would be a, an electrical subsystem where the resistance, current, uh, inductance, voltage, etc. These are the variables over there. And there would be another subsystem where the, the mechanics is involved. That is the torque, force, acceleration, velocity, uh, displacement, etc. Et is it clear? Okay, now come to the second uh, uh, comparison, the cylindrical and spherical. So generally the motor that we see uh, are the cylindrical motors, cylindrical machines. Okay, can it be any other form besides this cylindrical and spherical option? Uh, that's, that's the cement. Uh, the symmetry of the magnetic field. Okay, so that means there should be some sort of symmetry. To make it a rotational one, we have to have some symmetry. Now cylindrical and spherical, these two structures only give us some sort of symmetry about some axis. Other uh, 3D form generally don't give us symmetry with respect to an axis. So then, therefore we generally don't think of making a rotational machine in other uh, form, other 3D form. Generally we accept these two 3D form, cylindrical and spherical. So one example we showed in the last class of spherical machines, which is very um, uh, recent one, and which is used mainly in UAVs, robot, robotics, satellites, etc. So those are the basically the spherical machines. That is not done in our syllabus, but we should know what is a spherical and what is a cylindrical machine. So in, in cylindrical machine, generally uh, the degree of freedom are less. Isn't it? Only one axis is there and your uh, rotor can rotate on, the, on that axis. Am I clear? Cylindrical option to go on the axis and your rotor can rotate only on that axis. So this is the axis of rotation and your rotor can rotate in that way or it can rotate in this way. So these two are the options. No other options. In spherical, we have a six degree of freedom, you can say. So that means there may be uh, three axes on which your spherical uh, machine can rotate. Got my point? Yes, uh, think yes, of sir. your uh, think of your arm. Okay. So what kind of uh, joint is there uh, in 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 your shoulder? Because you have more ball and socket joint. Ball and socket joint. Correct. So that means some spherical thing is there, isn't it? So suppose you want to make yes, some sort of robot arm, then you have to use instead of having three different motors, say a cylindrical motor for giving three uh, different uh, degrees of freedom, you can use one spherical motor over there. 
Okay, so you get a more option in split cell motor, but that is a very uncommon one. That is very limited uh, research is going on in this field. So you should know the difference between the cylindrical and spherical motors. Okay, now come to the radial flux and axial flux. Now, generally the motor which we see is a radial flux motor. That means, suppose this is your rotor and flux enters radially. Okay, so this is the way the flux flows. So these are radial, which we generally see, but there are axial flux where the flux passes actually, and there uh, the radius of the speeder and rotor are same, but the flux passes actually like this. So I will, I, I will show you. Okay, so you see this. In axial flux, the radius of the rotor and stator, suppose uh, the, the green one is the stator and uh, the, the orange one is the rotor. Now in the first one, you see the flux will pass axially, but in the second one, the flux will pass radially. So there are two options, radial flux and axial flux machine, but mostly we will study the radial motors, radial machines, not the axial one. So axial motors have some application in the underwater vehicles, uh, like uh, torpedo and other type of underwater vehicles. Okay. Now the fourth uh, comparison is between the DC and AC. Now the type of the excitation, type of supply we are using. So we know that in electricity, we have two options of air supply, DC and AC. Now, uh, mostly we have AC nowadays in, uh, from the utilities, like our state electricity board and other uh, private electricity uh, organization. Generally, we get alternating supplies. But a few years back, in our Kolkata, most of the area was DC supply, under DC supply. Now it is converted fully to AC, but we had DC. Now also we some in some application, we have DC supply, like where we have to uh, give some portability, like in a vehicle. Okay, you cannot carry the wares from the utility. It is not possible to carry the wire to carry a generator with your vehicle, like e vehicle. So there you have to provide some battery, storage batteries. And you know the storage from the storage batteries generally we get DC. So better to use DC over there instead of converting the DC to alternating something in use an AC machines over there, AC motors over there. Better to use a DC motor. Okay, now where you have, you have only the AC supply, like at your home. Okay, now you want to run a fan, a ceiling fan or a table fan or a uh, stand fan. You want to run that. And now you, you readily you have, uh, you have AC, alternative supplies from the utility. Okay, so there you can use an AC motor. Like in your ceiling fan, generally we use an AC motor. Okay, got my point. Like in a mixer grinder or in a uh, uh, the pump uh, with the pump, generally we use AC motors because uh, their AC is readily available. But where you have DC source already, like in a in a, in a uh, toy car, so you have battery over there. So you can use DC motor over there. What my point? So depending on the availability of the supply, we can select the type of machines. It can be DC or it can be AC. So this uh, 
entire thing depends on the our availability of the supply but you should know that uh, it may be a dc machine or a or an ac machine but that is only related to the external interface internally everything is going on ac it may be dc machine or it may be an ac machine but internal thing is basically ac always due to some constraint that is the faraday's law of induction okay that you should remember so whatever we are calling dc or ac machine that is related to the external interface that means uh, uh, what type of supply i have is it dc or it is is it ac so if if, if it is a dc then if your motor takes directly dc power then you have to call that is a dc machine now if your motor can take directly ac supply you have to call it an ac machine but internally everything is going on that is alternate Okay, so that we'll discuss in detail when we'll discuss the DC machine. Okay, so is uh, the point clear? These comparisons, these variations of different electrical machines. Let me know. Yes, sir. Any yes, any sir. question? Any question? Sir, axial structure. Can I tell you? Axial flux tank. Hmm. We can't take too much. We want it to boost the volume. Okay. As a cylindrical resistor, we do it. Axial flux feature. Flux feature. Okay. Can you see the whiteboard? Yes, sir. Okay. First, I will uh, discuss the axial and uh, the cylindrical then i will go to the next option suppose mostly the motor uh, we see like this so here we have a rotor you also this type of figure we have already seen before isn't it like this and your motor rotates like this now here you see the flux is flowing radially and this is this is suppose this is the rotating part and this is the static part this is the static portion of the machine and this is the rotating portion of the machine okay got my point now your flux is passing radially suppose this is north pole and this is south pole the flux will enter from the north pole side to the uh, rotating uh, thing that is called the rotor generally it is called the rotor for the machine and then it uh, enters to the south pole and there is a complete magnetic circuit that I, that i will discuss later so basically here the flux is flowing radially now if the if the thing is that then uh, the radius of the rotating device and the radius of the static part will be different isn't it suppose here the radius of the north pole and the radius of the the rotating part is different isn't it now in case of spherical there will be two disk having equal radius is difficult to draw here but still i'm trying so in in a spheric in a axial flux you will have two radius okay suppose this is the axis now here the flux will pass axially like this and here this, suppose this is your static one and this will be the rotating one and this will rotate and this will remain static but the flux will pass axially parallel to the axis parallel to the axis the flux will flow 
that is the difference but in uh, radial the flux passes radial so that is the difference मल्टीपल स्टेटर मल्टीपल रोटर एस वेल हियर आई है शोन ऑनलि वन set of stator one set of rotor it can be two states uh, set of stator one set of rotor that is also pos possible but we have to see that how the flux is passing is it radially or is it axially depending on that will categorize the type of the mesh okay so that is the difference one more thing uh, somebody asks that is the डाय So there will be two uh, dimensions, but in case of spherical, how many dimensions you will get? In case of spherical, how many dimensions you will get? Sir, only radius. 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 Only Show that in uh, this whiteboard, but I showed that in an animation in the last class. What kind of spherical mesh is generally possible? Okay, so in any uh, okay. direction you can rotate that. So it will have more uh, degree of freedom. Generally, six degree of freedom it contains. Okay. And any other questions on this? शेयर Okay, so as I already as I have already mentioned that uh, in any machine, as far as the mechanical uh, thing is concerned, mechanical point of view, we can say that for a rotating machine, there will be some component which will be static, which will be stationary in space. Those components are generally called stator. okay and some components in a rotating machine will be rotating okay so those components are comes under the rotor so that is called the stator and rotor as per the mechanical thing is concerned okay and as far as the energy is concerned you know that Uh, there can be two options either the energy can flow from left to right that is mechanical to electrical or it can flow from right to left that is the flow of energy it can flow from left to right or right to left mechanical to electrical energy or electrical to mechanical energy depending on that 
we have to uh, type of machine generator and motor where, where the mechanical energy to the electrical energy that is left to right it will be called generator if the conversion if the flow of energy from right to left that is electrical to mechanical it will be called motor what my point okay now uh, other components are there that we have to discuss here there is some components are there which is responsible for the magnetic field now i i will tell you to the recall the left hand rule or the right hand rule okay so there we showed three different things by our three different fingers okay now think about the index finger what does it represent tell me our index finger what does it represent force no Sorry, okay, you should I should not forget this because I have already told that the magnetic thing always will come in the middle because without that the energy conversion would not take place. So therefore, you see what are the fingers which you are ex which you are stretching. The index finger comes in the middle. Okay, so that means the mid index finger always represents. the magnetic field okay now for any machine you should have some components which will provide you the magnetic field or which you uh, provide in the machine which you should provide in the machine and which will be responsible for generating magnetic field what my point responsibility is different and generation is different now when there is some current in any conductor if there is some current it will generate magnetic field but i don't want that got my point i am keeping some yes. components inside a machine for exclusively for that purpose of generating magnetic field got my point now i can uh, i can accomplish this either by a permanent magnet or by an electromagnet so now if it is an electromagnet then i have to provide a soft core iron on that i have to i have to uh, have some solenoid coil and i have to pass some current through it then it will be an electromagnet so that means there i am flowing some current but this current is not the middle finger because this particular current i am flowing in that solenoid coil to generate the magnetic field that is my purpose is that point clear ke jinish ta bujhte parecho yes sir some component will be there which will be responsible for generating magnetic field only now for that current can be flow okay now another component should be there in any machine which is responsible for carrying the electrical current only like that 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 component is basically will represent will accomplish your middle finger and that will be called the armature now sometimes uh, it is very difficult in a machine to identify which is field and which is armature so if we can remember this definitions then only we can identify which is field and which is armature because you know you just see that whenever there is an electrical current flowing through a conductor that also will generate some sort of magnetic field but that will not be called 
field got my point that will be called armature because i have provided that particular uh, conductor for carrying current now if some conductor carries some current magnetic field will be generated and that will that would not be called a field you have to understand these two things now field sir what is dc excitation no i i am just coming to that you just see first two points i will discuss that okay you just see first two points whether okay. you understood now field here is a physical component armature is also a physical component okay now the come to the third point field can be electromagnet or can be permanent magnet that point already i have mentioned we can use either permanent magnet for the field or we can use some electromagnet for the field okay so some advantages disadvantages are there if uh, based on that we generally select electromagnet or permanent magnet most of the machines that we see is based on the electromagnet okay but nowadays permanent magnets are also also being used for electrical machines because that gives you very compact size of the machine okay now the dc excitation and ac now dc excitation means most of the field generally we use dc excitation now what is excitation so i have already mentioned that if i have chosen the first option for the field that is the electromagnet i don't have any permanent magnet because the permanent magnet is costly also we have to import uh, this from the our foreign country because we don't have the uh, the uh, the mines of the rare earth material material which is used in the permanent magnet like neobdinum okay so generally we uh, in our country indigenously we make the machines based on the electromagnets on the permanent magnets generally we have to import from the foreign countries because we don't have the mines for those material which is used for the permanent magnets okay so our in our industry in in our entire country whatever the industry we have mostly based on the machines which has electromagnet now for electromagnet you know you you I, i think you you did some experiment on electromagnet so you need a soft core iron okay on that you you need some sort of uh, coil so let me draw here then you will understand it better okay so let us take this type of soft core and suppose you have a coil now what do you have to do how it will be an electromagnet is it okay or something else you have to do here i have taken a soft iron piece and i have a conductor over there what is i have to do to make it an electromagnet so current must flow through it so that is we have to flow some current through it then only it will be an electromagnet am i right all you have understood this in which direction the flux will flow yes sir in which direction the flux will flow according to the right hand crop screw rule upward upwards so this way the flux will be generated okay so that means we have to flow some current through it that is called the excitation okay you have to excite the coil you have to excite the conductor now the type of excitation which you are using based on that 
it is called dc excitation or ac excitation so here i have mentioned for most of the machines we use dc for the excitation dc current for the is it clear now now you know already i think uh, you have some knowledge of uh, you, know, you have according to uh, this is your signal theory whenever there is a current and if uh, this particular turn has the number of turns in now the thing which is generated first that is called n into i what is this can you can anybody tell me n into i so magnetomotive force m m m m correct so this is called the magnetomotive force mmm and the unit of what is the unit unit is very interesting ampere per meter ampere per meter unit is ampere turn not ampere turn per meter if we uh, if we want to express in ampere turn meter per meter that will be a magnetic field intensity h so that is a little different term mmf by l or ni by l so that has the unit of at per meter so these two uh, variables are these two things are little different okay anyway so ampere turn or the mmf is the most important thing now this mmf doesn't depend on the type of material we are using for the electromagnet we can use the iron that i have shown here we can use plastic as well we can use wood as well okay so everywhere the same mmf will be generated now how much flux will be generated that depends on the type of material okay so that depends on a different term which is called the reluctance that also i have mentioned which is inversely proportional to of your permeance or permeability isn't it okay now if your reluctance is low then more flux will be generated that means you have to provide some sort of ferromagnetic material as the core of that electromagnet to get more amount of from the same amount of mmf to get more amount of flux we have to provide some sort of ferromagnetic material so therefore we are using soft iron core okay now uh, through the armature generally the ac current flows not the dc okay so that will uh, discuss when we will discuss a particular machine so this we can uh, remember that for field excitation generally we choose dc for armature excitation generally we choose ac okay so that is the generally convention you you, you can you can differ from that but this is basically a convention is there any question up to this no, no questions sir, no huh no sir okay. no sir so typical type of machines dc machines induction machines synchronous machines so these are most common machines that is there in our syllabus okay so dc machines from the name you can understand that it takes dc supply okay and that is there in electrical machines one now induction machine and synchronous machine you will study in electrical machines two okay now in induction machine we have two types three phase induction machine and single phase induction machine so the three phase induction machine you study 
under electrical machine two subject and the single phase induction machines you will uh, you will study under the electrical machine three subject now you have another machine the synchronous machine which is uh, very much related to the power generation okay in most of the power plant the machines which we see is basically the synchronous machine now under each machines we have two categories like generator and motor like dc generator under dc machine we will have dc generator and dc motor and that under induction machines we will have induction induction motor induction generator and the synchronous machine will have synchronous generator and synchronous motor now synchronous generator is basically called alternator okay so the other name of the synchronous generator is called the alternator which is used in most of the power plants like in the therm thermal power plant okay if it has six units for each unit there is a dedicated alternator or dedicated synchronous generator okay the application of synchronous motor uh, directly in conventional form is not that much but synchronous generators are much popular now come to the induction machines i have already mentioned there are two types of induction machines generally we use single phase and three phase okay so three phase induction uh, machines are much popular in industries but single phase induction machines are popular for our household applications like i have mentioned in the ceiling fan or in any kind of fan we generally use a single phase induction machine where it runs directly from ac okay so that is the induction machine and also uh, in a refrigerator or in a pump or ac air conditioner generally we use induction machine single phase induction motor okay that we will study in electrical machine 3 and three phase induction motors are uh, uh, mostly used motors all over the world in industries and it has almost 90% of the share that is the most popular motors all over the world three phase induction motor okay so every uh, large motors are basically three phase induction motors. okay now dc machines and uh, dc generators and dc motors now dc motors uh, are popular but it is used in fractions like in train in electric uh, in metro or in uh, metro railways or in uh, this uh, emu trains generally we use dc motors also i have mentioned the application in toy cars we use dc motors another form of dc motors are also being used for the electrical vehicles electric vehicles and that form of dc motor is called the brushless dc motors brushless dc motors okay or in short form it is called the bl dc motors that is used in the electric vehicles so dc motors has huge applications but nowadays the application of dc generator is quite less because as i have already mentioned we don't need uh, or we don't have dc network so therefore we don't use the dc generators okay so one very big or large generate dc generator you can uh, you can see in our lab so that is the only place where you can get some sort of uh, op in operating condition also it's not just a ideal condition it is in operating condition so you can have a dc generators okay so these are the type of the machines and their applications it's called the dc machine so as i've already mentioned that dc machines as the name suggests it interacts with the dc power supplies 
it will interact with the dc power supply dc voltage and dc current from the supply it will uh, take a dc voltage and dc current when it will run as a motor now when it is a generator then also it will deliver dc current and dc voltage okay so the external interface is basically dc okay now field that is uh, here in case of dc machines the field is placed on the stator and the armature is placed on the rotor that you should remember here in the dc machine we generally prefer to place the field on the stator and we generally prefer to place the armature on the rotor but for dc machine the field is excited from a dc supply but in armature always alternating current flows got my point any clarification is needed so i have already mentioned for every machine you should have two distinct component one is called the field another is called the armature now the thing is for a uh, for a machine you know mechanically there are two parts two components one is stator and one is rotor now there are different combination is possible you can keep the field in the stator armature in the rotor or you can keep the armature in the stator field in the rotor isn't it but for dc machine generally we select this combination which i have written here field for the stator and armature for the rotor got my point now as i have mentioned in the third point that the field is generally dc it takes the dc current and armature generally ac current flows through now if that is the case then it uh, there is some conversion is required now this conversion depends on the operation of the machine depending on the operation of the machine that is the motor operation and generator generator operation the conversion required is varied conversion required can be ac to dc or dc to ac বুঝতে পারছো যে আমি জেনারেটর হিসেবে মোটর মেশিনটাকে ইউজ করছি না মোটর হিসেবে জিনিসটাকে ইউজ করছি তার উপর বেস করে আমার এই কনভার্সনটা ডিপেন্ড করবে বুঝতে পেরেছো যদি আমি মেশিনটাকে জেনারেটর হিসেবে ইউজ করি তার মানে হচ্ছে ইন কেস অফ জেনারেটর ভ্যাট দা ভোল্টেজ উইল বি জেনারেটেড you just tell me suppose i have a dc generator now where the output. voltage will be output. generated in which component output. which part of the machine no no i am just asking in which part of the machine the voltage actually will be generated in field or in armature field 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 sir field sir armature armature sir armature you you just uh, you just uh, uh, recall the definition field comes in the middle okay that is not involved in the energy conversion that is required for the energy conversion but energy conversion is taking place between the mechanical and electrical electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical suppose we are making a generator that means the voltage that will be or the current or voltage or power that we would generate that will be in the armature because that represent our middle finger got my point so that means the voltage will be induced that will be in the armature and induction is possible only uh, in form of 
alternating quantity that i will discuss later okay we cannot induce any dc voltage we cannot induce any dc voltage practically practically we cannot induce any dc voltage and you you already know that we have only one option one theory for that that is the faraday law laws of induction by that we can generate we can induce only ac voltage not dc so that means though it is a dc machine dc generator but actually the voltage which we can generate is alternating in nature okay so that means that uh, uh, necessitates and conversion from ac to dc because ultimately you have to provide the dc current or dc power or dc voltage what my point ki bujhte parecho ultimately eta to dc generator tumake output actually output jokhon dite hobe tokhon kintu dc form e dite hobe dc voltage dc current dc power shekhane tumake ac korle hobe na tahole machine tar naam tai tumake change kore dite hobe tumake jodi etake dc machine dc generator bolte hoy output ta at least output ta tumake dc korte hobe that means yes sir and you need some conversion here that is ac to dc and this conversion is generally called rectification ac to dc that i think that you know from your electronics knowledge so that means a generator should a dc generator should have an inbuilt rectifier okay got my point a generator should have an inbuilt rectifier now come to a dc motor now in a dc motor what type of supply voltage current generally we provide for a dc motor bolo at a dc motor er jonno amra ki supply provide kori is it dc or ac ac no it's a dc only because it's a dc motor you have to run from a dc supply always it will interact with dc power supplies that i mentioned at the first point itself it will interact with the dc power supply ki bujhte pachho na yes sir yes sir okay sir you see this will be for dc machine this will be totally dc so that that interface between the external world that should be always dc now for a motor there will be dc electrical power input dc voltage dc current etc now that i have already mentioned that in the armature the ac current must flow now if that is the case if your input is dc but in the armature ac current is flowing that necessitates a conversion from dc to ac and generally we call this type of conversion as an inversion so this is called an inverter so that means a dc motor should have an inherent inverter what this point uh, sir DC... inverter part ek ek bar bolen sir you see in the dc motor the actually supply we are giving that is dc dc voltage and dc current but in the armature which current will flow what type of current will flow ac current so how we will uh, change that from dc to ac actually you are giving dc but when it is flowing through the conductor it it becomes ac how it is possible that means you need some sort of conversion dc to ac then only it is possible so therefore the dc to ac conversion is required for motor so motor uh, dc motor should have an inherent inverter 
that is the point and this inverter or convert uh, the rectifier that is this conversion may take place either in the presence of brush or without the brush depending on that we have different names brush and brushless now what is brush that i will discuss later but brush is a is made up of carbon graphite have you seen graphite yes sir where you have seen graphite pencil lead correct so that is basically graphite so we generally use a cube made up of graphite electrographite is a special type of graphite we use a cube made up of uh, electrographite for a brush which is used for most of the dc machine so this type of dc machines are called brushed dc machine but nowadays we have another option we can have a dc machine without the brush also and that is called the brushless dc machine bldc machine bldc okay now uh, can you tell me how it is possible brushed and brushless how it is possible without brush now uh, you know that in last uh, 50 to 70 years there is a revolution in uh, solid state devices isn't it now we generally think when we call the rectifier or inverter or any kind of converter generally we think a solid state solid state rectifier solid state uh, inverter where you use diode pjt bipolar junction transistor mosfet etc so there is a revolution in solid state devices so generally when we are uh, we want some sort of conversion ac to dc or dc to ac we can directly use those type of uh, solid state converters okay so generally the brushless dc machines have this type of converters solid state converters what my point so that is the difference and brushed dc machines have very old technologies more than 150 years old technologies brushed dc machine. but that is also very robust technologies and used in large applications as i already mentioned in electric trains in emu trains local trains suburban trains emu electric multiple unit in those trains and in metro railways in trams everywhere you use brass dc machine only not brushless that is because that gives you a very reliable operation reliability of the brushed dc motor as per my opinion brushed dc motor though it has a very old technology more than 150 years old technology in use but it gives a more reliable operation than a brushless dc motor okay any clarification no sir okay uh, should i go to this diagram it will take some time how much time i we have today so you had al already one class before this should i explain this particular diagram today or will uh, maybe for the next class tell me i am giving you some option so next class next class okay so next class please okay uh, whenever you are getting saturated you just let me know 
so i can uh, take more class i don't have any uh, problem of taking uh, more classes okay anyway if you have any uh, specific questions on this you can ask me anything on sir i have one question yes uh, uh, sir why dc to ac conversion is not required in case of generator why in case of uh, generator we Yes. Huh. DC to AC. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, why inverter is not used in case of generator? Because, sir, in the uh, in that case also, uh, the current generated in the armature will be, sir, AC current. Yes. And then will be uh, and then no, will be. No, uh, you see, you see, you see, current is not is not generated. The voltage is generated. The power is generated. Okay, so current flows when you provide some closed circuit. There only current flows, so generally we call the voltage generator. Anyway, so voltage which is induced in a DC machine is alternating in nature, and you need externally you need DC power supply. Okay, so therefore you need so the sir, AC to no, DC. Uh, I bolo. Bolo. Rishab. So that's why no inverter is required there. That's why. Yes, sir. That's inverter is not required in that case. No. Yes. Therefore, you need only the rectifier. I will discuss in okay, details sir, how the rectifier uh, is uh, we are using there. What is the uh, purpose of using the rectifier? But then, how it operates? What is the basic uh, principle of operation? That I will discuss in details in the next class. So these are basically okay, an, uh, some sort of introduction to the DC machines. Any more question? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more question? Hello, sir. Yes. What is a single phase induction motor or three phase induction motor with the path of code again? Single phase induction motor runs from a single phase AC supply. I think you had some introduction uh, of single phase and three phase in your basic electrical engineering classes, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Last time, what we did actually, uh, I'm just uh, Telling you that last time what we did, we uh, don't have, we didn't have classes uh, for the first year for uh, several months, regular classes. Okay, so then we uh, floated a course from a different platform. If you have some bottlenecks in your understanding, okay, so that those uh, courses will help you a lot. So if you want any sort of course, any this sort of courses, which will help you to understand the things in a better way. So then you just let me know. So we have different platform, as I've already mentioned in the, in your induction program, in your orientation program. That uh, we have IEEE, we have IT, IET, we have different platform. From that, we can organize some uh, special investment. Hello. So I was disconnected due to this phone call. Anyway, so if you want this type of course uh, to understand the, your uh, this earlier uh, the theoretical knowledge in the electrical engineering, whatever you have already studied, if you want, you just let me know. Or uh, we have some uh, uh, we have some volunteers from IEEE and IET in our uh, class uh, third year and fourth year. So you just uh, uh, let them know that you, if you require some sort of uh, courses. Okay, anyway. Now, uh, uh, your question was? EGS so, Kolle Jana Tumhe? Single phase induction motor. So uh, three phase motors are generally run from three phase AC supplies. Balanced three phase AC supplies. 
there will have three phase ac okay three phase voltage having the same amplitude voltage amplitude but there you have 120 degree phase displacement in time that means suppose if you think of a alternating voltage source a single phase so suppose for 220 volt supply which we get as our household application generally it is 220 volt and 50 hertz supply isn't it so that means it's a sinusoidal voltage having the peak value of 311 volt because root 2 into 220 it comes around 311 so 311 and 50 hertz means uh, it has a time period of how much can you tell me what is the time period of 50 hertz sinusoidal waveform sir bolo sir 0.02 seconds 20 milliseconds sir 1 by 50 so you can remember like that way that 20 milliseconds that means uh, in first 10 milliseconds it will give some positive in the second uh, 10 milliseconds it will give some negative so this is how it oscillates anyway so that means it will reach at some point it will reach uh, to 311 volt then it, at some point it cross zero then it becomes minus 311 volt this is where uh, it uh, oscillates the voltage is single phase voltage okay now in case of three phase you will have three such voltage waveform having the same uh, amplitude 311 only but there will be difference in phase that means suppose you have a b c three phase voltage now when the a phase voltage will reach the maximum after 20 by 3 millisecond that is corresponding to 120 degree angle okay so that in time it uh, is 20 by 3 millisecond after 20 by 3 millisecond the b phase will reach its maximum after another 20 by 3 milliseconds the c phase will reach its maximum so that is meant by three phase voltage okay so this type of supply we use for the three phase induction motor and obviously the number of terminals we need is more for single phase you know that there is only two terminals one is live phase or one is neutral so phase and neutral so these two terminal we should have for any single phase or dc device but for three phase devices we need at least three terminals for three different phases sometimes four also if there is provision of neutral that is another difference but the problem is that the advantage of three phase is you see for single phase how many terminals how many conductors you require two but for three phase you don't require six you need only three that means by adding one additional conductor or additional terminal you can deliver more power so because you know that for three phase the power is more so got my point is that is the advantage of three phase mane two phase e jekhane amar dutto conductor lagchilo three phase e ami ekta conductor shudhu additionally bariyechi tate ami onek beshi power gain korchi so that is the advantage of three phase so therefore the three phase machines are more popular in industries why it is not popular as our household because we don't have any three phase supply as our household applications and also there is a, a more voltage because you know that in case of three phase the line voltage concept comes and that is root 3 times of the the 220 that is almost 400 and above that so uh, chance of getting shock is more in case of three phase so generally we avoid uh, the application of three phase at the household is it clear yes, yes. okay so any other question okay mm. so if you don't have other questions so i will uh, conclude the class here so thank you very